if the price rises in April, it's not firms, it's not regulators, it is the government putting people's prices up. Well, I wrote to the Chancellor three weeks ago um, asking him to uh, not increase the uh, rise, uh, the energy price guarantee in April by 20% as planned for all the reasons that have just been outlined there. And most importantly, what you have to understand is if we do increase it, it would result in an act of national mental health harm. People have been battered by successive rises in energy bills, 14% rises in broadband, 7% in water, 5% in council tax. And for the sake of just three months, and you heard the explanation of why it's just three months there, to send millions of people another letter is bad for people's finances. It's bad for people's state of mental health. It's bad for consumer confidence. It's bad for business. It puts inflation up. I cannot understand from any form of rationale why they would continue to do it. Now, I, I said on Monday before that we had the other statements that reading the runes, and, and you've worked in this industry long enough to know that when I say something like reading the runes, I've had runes to read. I thought that we are going to get a suspension of the rise. And in my letter, I asked for it to be postponed three months rather than cancelled, because in practical terms, that's a cancellation. But it also, the arguments I had back to me on lobbying for this were, what if wholesale rates rise again? Well, if you postpone the rise until July, then uh, if re wholesale rates were to rise, you still have that protection for the government coffers. And if they don't rise, which we hope they won't, then there won't be an impact on anybody in there. Now, my letter is now supported by over 100 major charities, the likes of which Citizens Advice, Alzheimer's, the Samaritans and many others. It's also supported by Energy UK, which is the trade body of all the energy suppliers. And I think we have built up a substantial head of steam. It doesn't seem to me to make any sense politically for them not to do this. They mm. have the wriggle room in the finances because they're spending so much less on the energy price guarantee than they thought that they were. So I think it is likely to happen. It should be happening now because the problem of leaving it to the budget will be that the, the energy firms are legally obliged to notify people in advance of, of energy price rises. So people will get the letters, and then if the budget cancels it, they'll then get the letters not. I understand there's some political theatre if they do that. In other words, it makes sure everybody in the country knows that the prices were going up and the government have just rescued them by not putting the prices up, and maybe that's what they want. But I'd prefer people to have the peace of mind now. Yes. What we might be able to spot and watch out for, though, is if the energy firms don't send those letters because they've basically been told not to send those letters by the government, then I think that is a big clue that we're going to hear an announcement that it that it's that the rise isn't happening. Right. I'm really all interested always to hear what you have to say, Martin. When I hear you say that you read the runes and you think this uh, this this change of policy by the by the Chancellor is on the way, I take that seriously. When I when I say I think it's going to happen, it's pretty much me putting my finger in the air and guessing the way the political wind is blowing. When you said, I take it you're getting indications from the people you talk to who know what they're talking well, about, I'm that this may be John, happening. All, I, all I'm saying I'm doing, John, is reading the runes. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to leave it at that if you forgive me. No, I, I, but I understand. <laughs> when you say that, I do understand what you're, what you're saying. But it, it's, it's not, look, it is not a promise that they won't do this. Sure. I mean, it could still go up. I, um, I would prefer to phrase it as, I would say if we're a betting man which funnily enough i'm not mm -hmm. um i would say there are it is a better than 50 50 chance that they will um postpone or potentially cancel the energy price guarantee rise planned in april yeah and from yeah. my stance as a campaigner on this and i've been doing this for, for quite you know quite a long time now i have been very clear to say to people and and, and some of the feedback i've had has, has said that this has been quite potent so i'm quite glad i did it i've been very clear to say to people it isn't the regulator putting prices up. It isn't firms putting prices up. The energy guarantee is the only price. You no know, broadband, water, council tax is not directly in government control. But some of them are to an extent. Yes. The energy price guarantee is government set pricing. So if the price rises in April, it's not firms, it's not regulators. It is the government putting people's prices up. And I have done that quite deliberately because, of course, that ramps up the pressure because there is a, a political expediency for them to bring it down. And what I will be careful to do, and I put this on notice now, and I've said this to them as well, if the government doesn't put it up, I will make sure that people know it is the government that hasn't put it up. 
because as a campaigner, you have to play it both ways. Mm. If you're asking for something, you make sure everybody understands it. But if you then get what you want, you have to do some form of plaudits or, or laudations for, for the people who, who then deliver what you've asked for. There's an additional, just an additional incentive for the Chancellor. He'd get a round of applause from you. And I, I just think you're saying it's it's fifty more than 50% likely you're going to see this turnaround by the Chancellor. That is well worth noting. I mean, discussing this, we, we can see at the Treasury they have more revenue to play with in this coming budget than they otherwise expected. There's a, an increase in, in tax revenues in, in the last month, which exceeded expectations. Some of that was you know, what you might expect in the, in the month that most people pay their tax bills, but it, it still gives them maybe £30 billion pounds more to play with in the course of, of the year. And they're going to spend that, you'd imagine, in one-off one off things like this, like the energy price guarantee, where they're not committed to long-term spending. So the wind does seem to be, you think, blowing in that way. A lot of people, uh, Martin, they they complain over and over again, surely not without justice, that, that wholesale prices of energy, that's been falling steeply. It's not been passed on to consumers. I was talking to one of the supply companies yesterday who say, look, it's not us. They're not making any money. They're even losing money. What's the truth of that? Uh, that, that that's half true depending on who the supply company was. So I'll, I'll answer that first and then I'll talk about the, the wholesale rates if, if that's okay. Sure, please. So look, what we have to understand is there are two types of energy firms. In fact, there are three. There's energy retailers who don't make any form of energy. They don't, not gas, not renewables. You know, they're not bringing electricity in. They're the ones, that's why over 20 of them went bust. And they're the ones they're not making any money at the moment. And they haven't been. You've got energy generators, those companies who do provide oil and gas or renewables, and they have been making huge, enormous profits. And then you've got those in the middle who do both, the classic Centrica, the parent of British gas. Yep. Its retail arm is losing money. Its generating arm is making a shed load of money. It is worth noting competition law means it can't subsidize its retail arm unless it subsidized every other company's retail arm at the same time. So it couldn't use its generating profits to give cheaper prices to British gas customers, which is somewhat frustrating. You understand why for, for competition law, but it's somewhat frustrating from a customer perspective. So when we talk about people get very angry about these baskets who are making so much money, you have to be, work out which energy firms are. Now, in terms of what's going on with wholesale prices, well, there are two elements to this. The first is, of course, that since last October, we haven't been paying the price cap. The price cap is a price set by Ofgem, the regulator, based on wholesale prices with a tiny bit of profit on top of it. Um, well, it's more than a tiny bit, but not excessive profit on top of it um, that it generates, that it sets. But since last October, the energy price guarantee is a government subsidy on top of that, mm. where the difference between what we pay and the, the price cap is a subsidy paid directly to energy firms by the government. Without that, our current bills for somebody on typical use, a meaningless figure, but good for illustration, wouldn't be 2,500 as they are now. It would be 4,300. Yes. Prices wouldn't have doubled. They would have trebled. Now, when people say wholesale rates have come down, but our rates haven't and the price cap hasn't, well, that's because the price cap is worked out based on a time lag. So the April to June price cap is based on wholesale prices averaged from the 17th of November to the 17th of February. And wholesale prices started to drop towards the very end of last year and the beginning of this year. So that's why, even though it's coming down substantially, and I'll use the typical use figure because it's the easiest way to explain it. Again, it's meaningless, though. It's all about what you use, is what really counts. It's coming down from 4,300 the January to March to 3,300 the April to June. But the prediction is the July to September will be at 2,160, and mm. then we'll stay on roughly that for the rest of the year. So the time lag is the issue with the price cap. Now, some people say to me, ah, yeah, it's going down. It's not going down slowly, but it went up quickly. To be fair, that isn't true. We, when it went up, we also had a time lag. It felt like it was going up quickly, but we were running behind wholesale rates. When they were rocketing, we were always three or six months, depending on which, which price cap area yes, we're in. Yes, yes. Time to rise. Well, I'm John Pienaar, and if you found that interesting, we are here each day, Monday to Thursday, 5 o'clock till 7 o'clock on Drive. And from 7 to 8, Pinar and Friends, where we discuss the big stories of the day each day on Times Radio.